Hey everyone! So I am back with a video that is all about my wedding dress, my rehearsal dress, um, just all the other elements that I wore on the wedding weekend uh, celebrations, and I wanted to just give a deep dive on my experience finding a dress and all the <laughs> trials and tribulations I went through, and potentially give some advice here and there. But yeah, stay tuned if you want to find out which dress I, which exact dress that I wore, where you can get it, and all the other details. So I'm going to start off with once we got engaged, um, I seriously started looking into a few options of wedding dresses and initially I was really set on a more traditional Chinese style, still white, wedding dress. So in Chinese culture, when you get married, you're actually supposed to wear red and gold and a lot of bright colors, mostly red because red is like the color of auspiciousness and happiness and it's the main wedding color in China. And the groom is also supposed to wear red as well. And nowadays in China, a lot of people, Chinese people, will wear a Western white wedding dress or they will wear white. Like not everyone in China will do a more traditional wedding. And in my mind, I just wanted to bring in some of my heritage in some way into the wedding and I was thinking I could potentially get a more traditional Chinese wedding dress. So I looked up this website called East Meets Dress and they specialize in these like traditional wedding dresses. I will link it down in the description and I will just put a screenshot of the dress that I ended up buying from them. And my thought process going into this was because this dress is bespoke and they have a no refund policy for their bespoke items, I decided to take the risk because for me, the risk was going to be worth the reward. For example, let's say I had gone with this dress. Obviously I did not because you have seen my <laughs> wedding photos and that is not the dress I ended up wearing. But if I had bought it and it completely didn't fit and I didn't get a refund, it's you know $300 out of pocket, which is a bummer. But ultimately, if it were the other case and where I bought it, if it perfectly, it's my dream wedding dress, I would have only had to have spent $300 on my wedding dress, which is obviously very low considering the average cost of wedding dresses is like three grand or probably more than that. So that was my thought process going in. Unfortunately, the dress that I ordered did not fit even though it was bespoke. Um, I don't wanna place blame anywhere. I had Dali, who was one of my co-maids of honor, do my measurements. I trust her. She does a lot of tailoring, cloth making, and things like that with her free time. So I trust that she took the right measurements. And, you know, they were very specific instructions on how to take the measurements and exactly where they asked for a huge variety of measurements. So I think I would just say the company does its best to gather as much information as they can from the client before the dress is made. However, for some reason, again, I don't know, I don't want to blame them because, you know, there's no 100% proof of like whether or not I submitted the right measurements, but like I said, I can only say that I trust that our measurements were right, but when I got the dress, it just did not fit. And I don't mean like, you know, a little bit off. I mean, it was so off that I was like, something must have went wrong and either I got shipped someone else's dress or something was off because even the length, which you would think is like the easiest measurement to get because it's just one straight line, was completely off, like more than six inches off. So to me, that was a signifier that potentially somewhere in the process something went wrong and the dress that I ordered just did not fit. So that was unfortunate. Um, I was lucky that actually getting that dress and trying it on, even though it was ill-fitting, I tried to make it fit as much as possible to see if I actually even liked the style. And it turns out I just didn't actually like the style that much on myself. I like wearing traditional Chinese teapaws and I think the teapaw that I end up wearing at the end of the night is, is beautiful and fits perfectly. But for some reason I think it just didn't feel very bridal to me actually. When I put it on, I just felt like, oh, this is kind of just like a nice formal dress um, that happens to be white and it, it just didn't make me feel very bridal, which I didn't expect because obviously I had never tried on a dress like that before. So ultimately I wrote to them, I pled my case and I ended up getting a 50% refund, which is great. And you know, they did not have to do that for me. So I'm thankful that they were able to offer me at least a 50% refund. 
and obviously I did not end up wearing that dress or keeping the dress I ended up shipping it back so that was a little bump in the road but I figured okay well now I can go a more traditional route and set up some appointments at some boutiques and try on some dresses and maybe let's go for a more traditional western style wedding dress so um, Dali and Eva who are my co-maids of honors both Alex and I just had co-best men and co-maids of honors and we had no further bridal party so the three of us decided to I booked an appointment at David's bridal at Beholden and at RK Bridal and this these all, all three of these locations are in New York City so those are the three that I booked we went to David's Bridal first and David's Bridal is it was okay like my experience was fine the, the consultant was nice but it definitely wasn't like that nice of an experience I would say which makes sense because they definitely cater to like a lower end um, price point so I understand they're not going to be like Kleinfeld's and I obviously did not book my appointment at Kleinfeld's because my budget going in was trying to keep everything under three thousand dollars and Kleinfeld's dresses start at three thousand prior to alteration so that was already out of my price range so David's bridal was was fine it was it was fine um, I would say that they didn't have a ton of dresses in my size and I understand I'm very petite so like it doesn't make sense to have a lot of dresses in my size because I'm smaller than the average woman I would say however the dresses like every dress maybe it was a coincidence but every style I picked out to try on they only had like a size 15 and there was just no way for me to get a sense of what it looked like on even with all the clips and the pins because it was just so so much bigger than my body so unfortunately i just don't think i got a good sense of any of the dresses and i think there was only one that i kind of liked and even that i didn't like it enough to really pursue it so david's bridal did not end up working out uh, but that's okay <laughs> so the next place that i had booked was rk bridal and then my last place was going to be beholden spoiler alert now i never went to beholden because i did end up getting my dress at RK Bridal. So I personally did not have an experience of trying on dresses at Beholden, but I will talk about that in a second. Editing Tiffany here. I totally forgot to mention this later because I was kind of rushing my camera was dying, but basically I did not personally go to Beholden to try on dresses, but actually one of my close friends who was getting married in March did go to Beholden and I went with them for their appointment and it was really it was really nice. Um, we went to the one in Fidei, I believe, and it was great. Like our consultant was really great. Um, she picked out the dresses that she wanted to try and I thought the attend like the person was really Attentive, and it was a nice setup so I from what I experienced as going with someone else for their dress try on I thought it was a nice experience uh, so I wouldn't sleep on Beholden and I would definitely check them out so um, I went to RK Bridal and this time I brought along some of my other friends as well that were not part of the, the bridal party obviously but they were just friends that I figured I would invite I think RK Bridal allowed you to bring eight people I think was the number um, that they allowed and I would just say off the bat I have heard very positive and very negative things from RK Bridal my sister-in-law actually got her dress from RK Bridal I had a great experience at RK Bridal but I also know people who did not have a good experience there so I think what makes or break it honestly is your consultant and you don't really get to choose your consultant you just are it's like the luck of the draw whoever you get um, so I would just say that going in, if you're going to RK Bridal, just go with that in mind. It is not a Kleinfeld. Again, it's for a lower price point, so it's not as fancy, um, but you do get, I believe, I had 45 minutes to an hour with my consultant, and she was great. Like, I really liked my consultant. Her name was Olga, and she was great. So anyways, um, the experience was really fun. You just go in, you submit ahead of time a few of the styles that you're interested in. And I will try to see if I can find photos that I saved of the styles that I was interested in because it's hilarious looking back on that now because some of them are completely different from the dress that I ended up going with. So the vibe that I was going with, I would say initially was I was really committed to sleeves for some reason. I really wanted long sleeves I don't know why I don't I we have a summer wedding so I, I don't know why I thought sleeves was gonna be 
a good idea, I guess. So anyways, I really wanted sleeves. Obviously, I did not have sleeves on my dress. I wanted a very, a more sleek silhouette, I would say, versus like a ball gown. Whereas my dress is not a ball gown, but my dress is definitely more of like a fuller dress. Um, so I thought I wanted a more sleek dress. I didn't want a long train. Obviously, I had a long train <laughs> in my photo. And yeah, I think just the vibe I was going for was more similar to like the Beholden catalog, I would say, which I'll just put in a few like example screenshots of like the vibe I was going for, or that I thought I wanted going in. And so yeah, so we tried on a few of the dresses that I had picked out. I think one of the problems was some of the dresses that had sleeves were also a lot bigger than my body size, so when they were on, it just didn't look right, and perhaps if they were my exact size, maybe I would have gone with one with sleeves, because just none of the ones I tried on with just looked, looked like they fit, and that was the biggest problem, and I obviously was not going to buy a dress if, if it didn't look like it fit, um, like hoping that it would fit if it came in my size. So honestly, towards the end of the appointment, I was feeling a little bummed out because none of the dresses I picked looked good and I just didn't feel like I was going to find my dress, honestly. And Olga ended up suggesting for her to go get a dress for me to try on. And I just said, okay, well, at this point, you know, there's nothing to lose. So she ended up bringing the dress that I bought and she brought it in and I was like, it's a little feminine for me. Like, I, I would say my style is not overly feminine. It's not overly masculine I, either, but it's de I definitely would not describe my style as feminine. So with all the details and everything, I was like, I don't know. But I did like that the bottom skirt was a slightly mauve kind of pinkish tone. I did like that because I was like, oh, I like that it's not such a brilliant white because my skin is kind of olive tone. I feel like that nice pinky tone would just really complement it. So I did like that and I did like the initial bodice area with the crisscrossing and things like that. I just, I, I just wasn't sure. So um, she was like, just try it on, trust me. Um, I think it'll look great on you. And lo and behold, I try it on. It's beautiful on, like even before I stepped out, I was like, I look like a bride now. Like, this makes me look like a bride. And when I went out, I could just tell on all my friends' faces, they were like, oh my god, like, this is definitely the best dress today that you tried on, and potentially this could be the dress. And they were all, every single person there loved it. And I loved it, and it has a big dramatic train, which I didn't think I wanted. Um, but it was just so funny because Olga the whole time was like, it's your one wedding day, like, you want the drama, trust me. Like, she knew we were getting married at a church, so she was like, it'll look great on the on the on the church steps and and she really just kind of ups I mean she definitely was upselling it because she obviously wanted me to buy the dress but um yeah so they after she got the sense of like okay she really likes this dress she put a veil on me which obviously also added to the effect and she had me kind of do a walk and a turn and then they do a whole moment of like similar to Kleinfeld's where it's like are you going to say yes to the dress and she also added that if I said yes to the dress that day I believe you get a 10% discount um, which was nice, and I liked the dress enough that I was like, you know what, I don't want to keep looking, this dress is nice, I look good in it, let's go with it, and I said yes to the dress. I will put in a picture of, like, the, what it looked like, you know, just trying it on. And you'll also notice that I initially was going to have these half sleeves that, you know, I was also really committed to that for some reason, I just really wanted something on my arms, um, and so I did end up purchasing those separately, but of course, um, because you have seen some of my actual wedding photos, I did not wear the sleeves the day of the wedding, um, and I'll talk about that a little later. Editing Tiffany here because I completely forgot to <laughs> talk about this later, but essentially the the more I looked at the photos, I just wasn't sure if I wanted sleeves, and also by the time my wedding was coming around, it, maybe it was just something about my feed or whatever, but I was seeing just a lot of weddings in the ether of women that just had these half sleeves and in my head it just seemed like too trendy and I wasn't sure if I wanted that and eventually I just decided to take them out because I actually have tattoos on both my arms and so I actually thought that having no sleeves there and just the you know sleeveless look would look cleaner on my arms and things like that and I'm so glad I ended up not doing sleeves so yeah, that is basically the story behind why I took them off before the day. But I did initially get the sleeves and they don't 
completely sew them on. They actually sew on buttons so that you're able to take them on and off at will, which is thankfully saved me down the line because when I decided I didn't want them, they were very easy to remove. And that was my day that I got my dress. So once you say yes to your dress, a person will come and take your specific measurements and then they have a guide that is brand by brand of like based on your measurements, this is the what standard sizing you should get. And your standard, your wedding size is very different to your normal dress size or clothing size. So for my clothing size, I range between a zero and a two depending on the brand. Um, dresses, yeah, I would say I'm probably like a two in the Reformation sizing guideline and I'm probably a zero when it comes to like Gap or Old Navy or Banana Republic. Sometimes double zero depending on the brand, but usually I hover between zero and two, petite. And my wedding dress size was a size six. So when you get your sizing, just know that like your wedding dress size is going to be probably completely different from your normal dress size. Um, so just in case that's like shocking to you, that's, you know, they're like, the sizing is completely different. So I got a size six and then someone takes, again, all of your complete measurements and then we'll mark that so that you can start on your alterations. And so the way that RK does it is you can pay your dress off with a credit card, but all of their alterations are done with cash only. So I believe my dress cost about $1,600 and then the alteration costs about 880, so let's say like $900. So I was within my $3,000 budget when it came to like my dress and alterations, which is great. Um, so now going into some of the other accessories, sorry, I just have my laptop next to me. Oh, actually, I will tell you exactly the brand and stuff and I will actually link the dress down below. So the brand is Maddie Lane bridal, Maddie Lane bridal, and the actual model of the dress is called the Joelle, and you, I will link the Maddie Lane website so you can just see what it looks like styled, um, but obviously when you go to RK, if you go to their website, they have a whole catalog of all of their designers and you can look that way. Next, moving on, is my veil. I went really cheap with my veil, which is something that I saw on every platform. Like Everyone who I saw was giving me advice to be like, do not splurge on your veil again unless you you know have an unlimited budget and you really want to then like go ahead but there is no need to splurge on a veil you can get a very high quality veil for relatively cheap that's what i did so i went to etsy and i got my veil off of dareth colborne colborne which they have their own website but they also are on etsy so i just ended up getting mine through etsy and it was 40 bucks for my elbow length it's called the pencil edge double layer veil. Um, I didn't even actually end up wearing my veil over my face when I walked down the aisle and stuff because I wanted my face to be like exposed, but I liked the double layer because in photos we could do like the nice like veil effect photos and I'll put some in here so you can see what, understand what I'm talking about. So I definitely wanted that look, so I did want a double layer veil, but I think traditionally the double layer just means that you could put one in front of your face and have that and then it kind of goes all the way around your head instead of a single layer is just in the back. And since my dress is really long, I had a long train and I'm only five feet tall, I did not also want a long veil because I felt like that would just make me just look, I don't know, I think it would actually make me look really short. So instead I kind of went for a shorter veil um, so I felt like everything was just more upright. I don't, I don't know if that, I'm explaining that right, but I just feel like my proportions looked better with a shorter veil, so I ended up going with an elbow length veil. And there's different veil lengths. I would say there's maybe like the little one that's just like the cap, and then it probably goes to elbow, and then there's fingertip, which just means when you're standing, it's like down to your fingertips, which is basically like knee length, I guess. And then there's like the cathedral veil, which is the one that goes all the way down, um, like down your train and is a long one. For my shoes, I also went comfort first because I was not about to, first of all, eat shit with like six inch heels on. And also I just wanted to be comfortable because we were going to do all of our photos before the ceremony. So I just needed shoes that would last. And I actually got my shoes relatively early in the journey, but they're just these beautiful, simple white slingbacks from Macy's. 
I'm not even sure what brand they are to be honest and I don't think I, I couldn't find the receipt but if I can try to link them if they still have them on Macy's I will link them down below and I believe when I bought them they were full price for like $65 but Macy's has sales all the time and you could probably get them for like 50% off and they were great they lasted the whole day um, they're com they were comfortable enough like they were not you know flip-flops obviously but they were comfortable enough and I liked that it was the smooth kind of almost patent leather and that way it didn't catch on my dress whatsoever I didn't want um, jewels or anything on my dress I mean on my shoes because that could potentially snag when you're walking so that's something to keep in mind is I would just try on your shoes with your dress or try it on with any dress that's like floor length to see if it'll snag because if your dress has a lot if your shoes have a lot of jewels on them that could be a problem as for jewelry I kept it very minimal because the bodice of the dress is very intricate and things like that I actually wanted to go with no necklace and just do some drop and dramatic earrings so the earrings that I got I also got off of Etsy off of this shop called Wanderlust Jewelry they're these beautiful earrings I will obviously put a photo of like an up-close detail shot of my jewelry and they were not cheap they were like $99 but they are very well made and I think they're so worth it they're really pretty um, they didn't feel too heavy like they were definitely substantial earrings but my ears didn't feel tired at all throughout the night and I wore them throughout the entire day and my ears were perfectly fine I didn't get any redness or irritation so um, highly recommend to go check out their jewelry they had a lot of really cute pieces and the last piece of jewelry I had was a bracelet because I have a terrible watch tan I don't know if you can even tell from the camera from that distance but um, it's a severe watch tan because obviously I've had this watch for over a year so I was freaking out <laughs> a few weeks before the wedding not quite sure what to do because obviously we would get some touched up photos but not every single photo will be touched up so I was like okay the touched up photos I know are gonna look fine because they can always erase my watch tan but what do I do about the other photos and I was just like going back and forth of what to do I did not want to put foundation on my wrist because that would just risk getting it on my dress and I just didn't really know what to do and then eventually I looked up a few bracelets that were wide enough to cover some of the watch tan and just take the attention away from the watch tan but not so big that it's like a cuff because I did not want like a big heavy cuff so I actually found this bracelet on Macy's I think it was $15 from like the INC line I'm not even sure it's actually really good quality and you can see it just covers enough of the watch tan that I think it just it didn't look as stark and I didn't really notice it at all throughout the day or in the photos so that's what I did to cover up my watch tan uh, I just it was at a point of no return already by the time I realized I had a watch tan it was kind of like I just had it and I didn't have time to like untan it or you know tan all the areas around it and it was just gonna be a lot so I, I just said whatever like let me just find a bracelet that fits so if you <laughs> have a watch tan and you're dealing with this problem I would say you could also wear a watch like wear a nice watch I actually do have a very nice watch that my mom passed down to me but I just didn't think it just to me that the watch definitely brings down the overall vibe like it makes it more casual so I would not go with a watch unless maybe it's like a family heirloom watch or it has it's like a very um you know like jewelry style watch then like maybe I think that could work but for me I just ended up going with the bracelet and lastly I thought I would just talk about my wedding band because technically that is something that I wore specifically on the wedding day or I got to wear during the ceremony and I just have a very simple uh, diamond band I am not sure if it will focus but I hope it will because I can't really see uh, but you can see I actually added a spacer in between but the bottom band is just a very simple kind of diamond and I don't have any going around the back because um, you know it's just unnecessary like you're really only gonna see the the front anyways and also that prevents the diamonds from falling out over time because when it's all the way around it's beautiful and it's nice because you know no matter how it turns there's diamonds all the time but um, with where like the diamonds tend to fall out so I just you know decided to go with just the half and we got the our wedding bands both of them from a local jeweler which I will link down below AH Fisher in Red Bank they were great 
Um, a lot of Alex's family gets jewelry there, so they were able to give us a really nice discount on our jewelry. But yeah, they, they're great. They do custom pieces as well. And I love my band, so yeah. I think eventually um, I will actually upgrade and get a spacer that also has diamonds on it. Um, this one is just a spacer ring I got from Etsy to try on to see if I like that look. And the reason I have a spacer is because my diamond is a low sitting, low setting diamond, which is what I wanted. I did not want a high, like a tall diamond, but obviously the um, drawback with that is then when you stack it with another band, there's a gap in between and it's not a flush stack. So sometimes people get a stacker ring, which is exactly what I did. And yeah, so that's my stack. And the last outfit that I wore for my wedding day was my reception dress. And this was also kind of a little bit of a story. I initially bought a white dress secondhand from ThreadUp that I was very committed to wearing. It's actually a dress that I've liked for a really, really long time and really thought that I would wear on my wedding day as like a reception dress. However, the more I tried it on at home and things like that, the more I just didn't feel my best in it. And I kept trying to like force myself to like it kind of. And then one day I just snapped out of it and I was like, look, you spent money on this dress, um, it's fine, it's whatever now, but like this is your wedding day, you should wear exactly what makes you feel happy, and this dress just for some reason is not making you feel happy. So I ended up nixing the dress, and it actually all worked out because in May, when we went to California for my brother's wedding, my mom ended up bringing me a few teapals back from China, because obviously it's easiest to get teapals in China, they're cheap, they're made really well there, and um, they just, you know, they're all manufactured there. So I had her bring me back a few pieces. And one of these, which is the one that I wore on my wedding day, I tried on and immediately everyone was like, you look so good. Like that dress looks so good. And I looked at Alex and I think we both almost had the same idea because I looked at him and I was like, what if I wore this for the reception? And he was like, you should absolutely wear that for the reception. And yeah, so that's what I did. I ended up um, changing dresses right after the ceremony. We had about an hour break between the ceremony and the cocktail hour so I was able to completely change my my dress and change into that dress and then for my heels I actually just wore a pair of black heels that I've had for a long time and they're from Anne Klein and they're great heels I will see if I can link them because they're actually like one of my favorite heels they look so sleek on and they're actually so comfortable so it was actually nice to have my give my feet a breather from my wedding sling backs because they were very closed toed and then switch to these black shoes, which are still closed toed, but the way they fit just fit differently. So it actually felt like it gave my feet a break and I could wear those heels dancing all night and my feet were totally fine um, until the end of the night. Now I will quickly touch on what I wore on the rehearsal day and our rehearsal dinner, which was the day before. I actually bought this white, little white dress off of ThreadUp and I guess I paid $19 for it. I just looked it up because I was like, there's no way I paid $19 for this, but my receipt says $19. It's, origi it's originally from Show Me Your Moo Moo, which is actually more of an upscale brand. I feel like most of their pieces cost anywhere between like 100 to, you know, all the way up to 300 because they mostly focus on silk pieces. But I guess this one was just really on sale on ThreadUp and I probably had some credits maybe that got it to that $19 price. But it's this cute little dress with like the nice puffy sleeves. And I just wanted something very summery and light and a little more casual because the rehearsal was at the church and then the dinner was at just a local dinner, a lo local dinner, local restaurant um, called Patrizia's in Red Bank. There's also a location in Brooklyn actually. And it's a really great restaurant. You should totally check it out if you're in this area. And it was just, it's like a more casual vibe. We told everyone that the dinner was going to be casual. And so I didn't want to dress up too much. And then I just wore a string of pearls that I don't even remember where I got. I'm pretty sure they're, I'm almost certain they're fake actually. Um, and then I also wore just a pearl bracelet that Louise actually gifted to me for Christmas one year. And I'm not sure if you'll see any photos. If not, um, I will just insert like a photo of it here if I don't have any of it with me like wearing it where you can see it clearly. But yeah, and then for shoes, I'm pretty sure I just wore some brown sandals. I don't even remember what shoes I wore. Um, but yeah, like I said, I wanted to keep it more casual and just do that. And then the rest of the weekend surrounding those events, like we also had some lunches and some dinners here and there. I just kind of wore white 
Like I had other white pieces in my wardrobe already and I just wanted to wear those. I did not want to go out and get like a completely new wardrobe just for this weekend because I am very accident prone and wearing white is kind of just like a beacon for things to spill. So I don't have a ton of white in my wardrobe and I did not want to fill it with more white things that I would just never wear again. And that was kind of my thought process going into the weekend. Lastly, I will quickly touch on bridesmaids dresses. So this is kind of a hilarious story because since I only had two co-maids of honor and Dali and Eva have been my best friends since so we've known each other for almost a decade now. I just decided to kind of give them a lot of free reign on what they wanted to wear. I told them basically whatever color they want, and obviously as long as it's not white, and either I would decide like one element to be the same. So either the color would be the same in different styles, or the style could be the same with different colors, or if both are floral, you know, like just some sort of element to make it just a little more tied together was fine with me. And let me tell you now, <laughs> I don't know if they're watching, but if you are, I mean, we just like had to laugh about it because it took so long to find them their dresses. I don't, it just for a variety of reasons, like either it wouldn't fit Dali or it wouldn't fit Eva or the color wasn't right or the style wasn't right. And it was just like, we could not find two dresses that they both liked, that both looked good. And at this point, towards the end of the process, I was like, I don't even care what dress you guys wear anymore. Whatever you like and fits, go for it. I can't, <laughs> I can't even spend any more mental energy on this because it was just such a long process. And hilariously, we did, I did my bachelorette with them in Ottawa. We did a weekend in Ottawa. And when we were there, we decided to go to the local, like downtown, historical downtown area. And there is a mall there called Hudson, what is it? Hudson's Bay in Ottawa. It's like literally the Macy's of Ottawa, I guess. And so we go in there and we, they had a whole dress section. So I was like, why don't we just browse? We have some time to kill. Let's just see. And of course that happens to be where they end up finding the dress. So it's this black base with red flowers from Karl Lagerfeld. And I believe it was also on sale that day. So I think they got like a really good deal actually um, on the on the dresses and Dali ended up tailoring them slightly so that they look how they look in these photos. So initially the dress was long sleeve and I believe floor length or almost floor length and so Dali ended up tailoring them so that they were short sleeve and that it had like a nice like side I guess like side swoop, I don't know, like a side wrap kind of look, which I was totally fine with. I was like, whatever, however you want to modify it because the fabrics are the same, even if you went with completely different styles, like that's totally fine with me. And yeah, so God, finding their dresses was such a process. The only advice I would say is if you have any more than two people that you need to get dresses for, as the bride, I would just be... Um, firm, I would say. I think I, I think more direction and sometimes is better than just being completely like whatever you want is fine because then it's actually hard I think for folks to like figure out a direction to go with. So I think if especially if you if unless you truly do not care then I guess go for it. But I think if I were to do this again I would have been like this is the color that's the color, go find the style. Because then I think it gives them direction and it's a lot easier to filter out a lot of choices when you give them specific things. Or I would have been like, this is the website, I like the styles of dress on this website, so find something that works. Or, um, you know, these are this is the style that I think would look good, pick two different colors. Like, I just think if I gave them a, a little more guardrails, um, then perhaps the process would have taken shorter. But again, like I said, for me, it wasn't a huge risk because again, these are like my two best friends. I knew they were going to find a dress like ultimately. And to me, that just wasn't like a big thing I was concerned with because with photos, I was like, well, you can tell that I'm the bride. So I'm not really worried about like the photos. And it's just something that I, I, my priority was for them to look good and feel good. That's all I cared about is like, just find a dress that you feel confident in and that you want to wear all day. And you don't even have to wear it for the reception. They ended up wearing theirs to the reception, but I just said, you know, it's really just for photos and the ceremony. So, you know, it just got to a point where ultimately I just gave them a deadline. I was like, if by May 1st, you do not have dresses, I am going to pick your dresses. <laughs> and then of course we ended up finding their dresses um, during my bachelorette trip. 
So it ended up all working out in the end. Um, I just thought I would share that tidbit because it's such a funny story. And like I said, my guide to you is just to give a little more guidance rather than be totally hands off, I think will be helpful in this process. So that was my whole wedding dress, wedding attire video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know down below if there's any other wedding related content you want to see. I will get back to making ASMR videos at some point. I also need to do a whole life update because there have been some crazy things going on in our lives that's been affecting my video making capacity. Um, but yeah, so this channel is not going to just turn into wedding content, but I just wanted to film something I felt like filming rather than not say hi to you guys at all. Um, so there will be more ASMR videos, I promise. Um, just give me some time. But I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you soon. Bye.